Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourself and rest for a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to a land of Gennesaret, and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Before 
before the boat makes the shore, there is this second miracle. And the only reason I point it out is because as we learn from that text, Jesus sees his disciples fighting to cross over to the west side of the Sea of Galilee. Now, for those that have been to the Sea of Galilee, if you have, you'll understand why this might have been a struggle. If you haven't, there are a couple things to point out, just generally. First, the wind off the Mediterranean Sea goes from the west to the east, pushing about one or two in the afternoon, it starts to blow. And if it is a blustery day, it's coming till six or seven o'clock at night, and it's solid. You also have to remember that the Sea of Galilee is 600 feet below sea level, which means it's sitting down here. So all that wind is not only pushing out, but down into the sea. So it's no wonder why there were so many stories of the storms that whipped up and caught them unaware. These were the prevailing winds. But not only that, in that wind, Jesus is walking across the water. Instead of being amazed that they've just fed all these people, they've just healed all these people, they've done all these amazing works with Jesus, and now they see him walking across water that they can't cross in a boat. Instead of that, they think they've seen a ghost, because surely a miracle couldn't happen. So instead of walking ahead of them, he got in the boat with them to calm them. They missed out. All this work, all these miracles happening all around them. But they were blinded by the boat and the challenge they were facing at that very moment. The real question is, where are we in that observation? Are we there with them? Are we blinded by our present? Are we too busy to witness to any miracles we may or may not see? Are we taking the time to even slow down long enough to consider whether there actually are any? What I've seen here in the short time I've been here is that you've been busy. There are a lot of people doing a lot of work in a lot of ways and a lot of places. It's a lot of a lot, but it's true. What I want to be here today is a little more transparent with all of you as I was this morning. You see, I was trying to do the same thing you were doing here somewhere else. So I can relate to the fact that this past year has been challenging in different ways for all of us. But saying that repeatedly to all of you would be as if I were, in fact, preaching to the choir. Amen. Which is okay, buddy. Thank you. My hope is, as this work continues of all of us, working together, focused on whatever it is we're focused on, Hopefully soon, there is some rest and renewal and joy to come. I heard something, and it's very nice to be able to find things. I think it's a God wink. Came across something the other day that seemed to capture a way to view all the hard work that should lead us to help God in his kingdom and that growth. It's a simple quote. It says, bad farmers produce bad crops. Good farmers produce good crops. Uh, an abundant harvest. A great farmer produces good soil. In other words, a great farmer, a great disciple is in it for the long term, not for the crossing of the boat, or for the moment where they're missing out on the miracles around them. This is a time and a place where we all need in our busyness to make sure that we pause and look around and soak in some wonder. However we do it, whatever we've seen, 
We should also remember that even in the midst of all our busyness, even in the midst of all the things that are going on, we need to pause and thank God truly. We need to reset our focus on the good soil as well as a good harvest. Yes, we want a good crop to come. But we need to also trust a little bit more, at least the preacher preaching to himself, that God sees all that effort. And not only will the harvest come, but so will the soil. We must also ask in prayer and then look for the miracles that happen along the way. As well to trust that God will multiply all those efforts in our prayers, in our hopes, in our focus, in our efforts. Because you see, if we don't do that, that is when we begin to lose energy and our hope starts to fade. God calls each and every one of us to rest, to Sabbath, as they say. And I will tell you very clearly, as I learned in seminary, and as a clergy person, I learned about Sabbath. What I learned was that my Sabbath was usually not the same time as the community. And that's okay. I also learned that you have to find Sabbath sometimes. It's not going to find you. And that's okay. After a full week, a complete week, learning all about the hard work as you prepare the soil here, I was very impressed. I remained impressed. But I was also feeling a little bit tired. Again, it was a good tired, but it was still tired. I had big plans to give my brain a break and do some much needed manual labor at home, which could be any number of manual labors, but they're usually way down on the list. And I need to catch up. I was just seeking to take a pause, to shut off my brain. And that was until things changed. And for about the past 48 hours, I have spent my time in sort of a roller coaster of events involving a friend at Centera Norfolk. As our gospel noted, and as I realized, it was fine with me to close the service. As I realized, the people I visited at this moment are without a shepherd. I was one of their shepherds once. And knowing their faithfulness to God, and my faithfulness to God, their faithfulness and all the efforts they had put forth for their church family and for Laura and me. I knew I needed to be there. Like so many of you, you have filled in and been the shepherd of a project or a thing, whatever that thing may be, or people who desperately need you. There are so many things that I appreciate about the efforts going on here. As we continue to prepare the soil so that transformation will follow. Those things that were needed, shepherds stepped up, whether or not it was their gift. So I think it's important as I begin my relationship with you to be a little bit transparent in those relationships. As a minister, I am called to support this community. But I'm also called to support those in this community and around it that need to seek a closer relationship with God. And also to serve in a capacity to support the diocese that supports this region in our church. All of these things take balance and boundary and honesty. Like this church family, we must be willing to share our gifts and talents, but also our honesty when weekends like this for me happen. 
so that we can all move forward in a healthier way. If something happens, if you need something, don't wait. Ask. Seek help. Seek one another. But at the same time, it doesn't work well with our energy and our hope if we don't take those times to pause and pray and acknowledge the daily miracles that are going on around us. And not allow us to become so hardened that we lose sight of them. That we can no longer see them as miracles. We must work together to share those miracles when others need to hear them. And hear those miracles as others share them so we can continue to build one another up. And if there are times when you don't think you can take one more thing, please reach out to me. Or reach out to others that you trust. So that all of us can work together to find ways and solutions so that we can continue to do the important work of God here and now. I want to tell you, while I had to pause earlier, I could not be more energized from what I've learned in the past couple weeks. Because I know that your efforts are sincere and are devoted to this place. I would not have had the energy that I needed to expend this weekend which totaled about 14 hours at Centera in the past 48. Committed with those hours of prayer and support of a family in the hospital in a dire situation, in a grieving family. I couldn't have done it without all the energy that I drew from here. Had it not been for one specific moment, that still gives me pause. When I saw the faces of all the people who were gathered here to receive from the food pantry, but not only those faces, the energy and the smiles of all those people that were supporting that effort respectfully and giving those people the things that they needed for that day. To see all of those faces, to be able to stand in the midst of you and pray in that moment, that is the miracle I need. Now, I can't say whether or not God was preparing me with that miracle to handle what was coming next, the wind and the waves of the storm that I've been through. But I can tell you it got me through to this moment. So I would encourage all of you, continue to do God's work whether it be here or outside this community, the places that feed you so that the soil can be prepared not only for this season, for this harvest, 